Hi, this is Steph. I wrote you last week. Um, you asked for a quick video. Very quickly here we've got <clears throat> the collar already on. That's the big leather piece around the neck. And then we've got the harness already on. But I have not put on the whole back straps or the traces yet. The traces actually hook up here at the very front of the collar, right up here. And these traces actually form a long line that go all the way to the back. And here we've got chains and it hooks up here okay, to what's now called you can see a single tree. I've just snapped that. I had to put the camera down to actually do it, but you get the idea. Now, the breaching here in the back, this is the part that goes around the back of the horse right here. This is actually the brakes. This stops the carriage, or whatever implement you have, from hitting the horse in the legs. Now, here we have holdback straps. This holdback strap is about to be attached to this loop right here. You can see that. Pullback strap is attached to the shaft. There is a ring underneath to keep this strap from sliding. You can see the ring right here. The, slap go, the strap goes through it. And I'm going to put the camera down here briefly and hook this to the now ring I've done right here. on the other side. It's important that they are even. On the other side, I happen to have three holes showing. On the other side, I have three holes showing. For the different horse, and for the next horse I hook up today, it might be something entirely different. This is just like a girth that has to be set for each horse that you're riding. All right, so what happens now with this, the whole back strap that I just put on back here in the back, imagine for a minute that the carriage is moving forward and now the horse stops. What's gonna happen is that whole back shaft, or the, the whole back loop is attached to the shaft. As the shaft goes forward, because the carriage wants to continue forward, it's gonna pull snug on the back end. So when the horse stops, you'll actually see that this whole piece in the back will snug up against the horse's rear. Now as the horse starts to step forward and pull, the trace right here will pull on the collar. You can see the trace goes all the way back to the back here. All the way back to the back. Remember we snapped it on back there. And that's actually what transfers the force from the collar to the carriage and pulls it forward. Hope that helps and I hope that was fun. Okay, one last thing I should mention is also fit. <clears throat> right now, this is fairly snug, kind of loose here. The horse is not pulling. However, if I put my hand back here in the breech, this is this part in the very, very back, I can put one fist in here. If I can put a whole bunch, then this is so loose that the cart's going to come sliding way forward before this snugs up and stops it. Also, if it's just too tight, it'll just have the horse miserable. You want the horse kind of always with a gentle pressure either between the trace or the breeching in the back. Now, if it's also too loose, when the horse goes to start, if the trace is too loose and the breeching is too loose, what's going to happen is there's a delay, then the cart will jerk forward, and then when the cart stops, there'll be a delay and it'll jerk forward and then stop hard, which is not very pleasant for either the passengers or actually for the horse. And a horse that is not well broke, like the one you guys had was fantastic, uh, a horse that's not well broke, that'll become annoying, and some of them will actually kick or buck or become cantankerous in other ways. Um, again, this is Steph Happ, 602-318-9552 um, or twang at reagan.com if you want to get a hold of me and ask further questions. Happy to help or come out for a ride. Talk to you soon. One thing Bye. I didn't mention is that back here where the traces hook up on both sides, you can see that, this is the single tree. <clears throat> the single tree hooks up to either the carriage or the cart by a bolt right here. And you can see that this can move. And the reason it moves is it allows the horse's shoulders a little freedom of movement when they're walking. And you can see the traces on both sides, one here, one there, and they go all the way to the front up to the collar. And this is also a nice time to see, once again, the breaching in the back and how the whole back straps attach to the carriage. All right, we're standing here. I've kind of got a bit of a hill ahead of me. You can see that the single tree and the traces are hooked right here in front of me, and as she wiggles, moves her shoulders, you'll see that this will move. Up, up! <clears throat> okay, and you can see it giving with her shoulders. You can also see how loose the breeching is. That's the part that goes around the horse's backside. You can see it's nice and loose. And in a second, we're going to go downhill, <clears throat> and you're going to see how the traces tend to loosen just a tad. And now the breeching is going to snug up. And now you can see it's a lot snugger than it was just a brief moment ago. And oh, now as I stop, you can see there's no rocking of the cart. There's no slamming of the cart into the back of the horse. 
because the breeching is snug and the traces are snug. Not tight, but they're both snug, so there's a nice even balance between going forward and backing up, or going forward and stopping. And of course you can also back up if you need to. Okay, up, up. And once again, you can see that there's no slamming in the start. There's no delay between when the horse starts and when the carriage starts. And that's how you know you've got the breeching and the traces set nicely. The only other consideration is that you, of course, don't want there to be no clearance between the back of the horse and the single tree. And again, the single tree is the part you see moving back and forth. 